One of the great things about extra credit is that it's extra credit makes it really, really good. And even though a question that's worth regular credit means just as much, there's something about it being extra credit that makes it extra special. So a long time ago, I put this question on an exam and it was a calculus question and nobody got it right. Not a single person got it right. So then what I did was I started putting this question on several tests every semester, semester after semester, and nobody was able to get this question right. In this video, we're gonna go over this question and we're gonna solve it. And the reason that you see this book here is because I wanna talk a little bit about this book. So the reason that nobody answered the question that I put on the test is because it wasn't necessarily a standard question from the book they were using. And I kind of feel like this book kind of describes that non-standardness. This is an older book, so it's very, very different from the newer books. So you're gonna get a different perspective on calculus. And I honestly think that by working through a book like this, it will help you solve questions like the one I'm going to show you in this video. This is Essential Calculus with Applications and it's a Dover book and it's by Silverman. And it's an awesome book. And this is one of the first Dover books that I ever bought. I have had this book for years. The contents of this book are very different from the contents of modern books. Look at this, chapter one is actually mathematical background. It talks about sets, numbers, inequalities, absolute value. It takes a very, very different approach and it has a very different feel than modern books. Then it talks about differential calculus, differentiation as a tool, integral calculus, integration as a tool, functions of several variables, and then he does have some hints and answers in the back of the book. And by some, I mean quite a bit. It's not necessarily just the odd ones. There's some even ones mixed in there as well. So I would say he's fairly generous when it comes to the answers. Here's a picture in the book where they define the definite integral. And so this is a picture that you would see in modern books and you might even see better ones. So he does actually include illustrations in the book, which are helpful, but you're going to find a lot less pictures in a book like this than you would in a modern book. Also, you're not gonna get enough practice problems to really like ace your calculus class. You're still gonna wanna do problems from one of the more modern books in order to prepare for exams and stuff like that if you are actually taking calculus in high school or in college. To me, this is more of a book that you would buy for self-study or to supplement your current course. I really think you'll learn stuff in this book that you don't see in the modern books. I love this in the back. It talks about the quality of the book. A Dover edition designed for years of use. We have made every effort to make this the best book possible. Our paper is opaque with minimal show through. It will not discolor or become brittle with age. Pages are bound in signatures in the method traditionally used for the best books and will not drop out. Books open flat for easy reference. The binding will not crack or split. This is a permanent book. And honestly, I have had this book for years. And even though it's a paperback, that's one of the things I really like about Dover books. Also the price, this book is extremely affordable. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into that problem that I was talking about. And I'm gonna show you how to solve it and I'll explain why nobody got it right. Okay, so this is the problem. Find the equations of the tangent lines to the graph of f of x equals x squared that pass through the point one, negative one. So this problem looks really innocent, but it actually has a technique that you don't see in other tangent line problems in textbooks. And that's pretty much the reason that I think that nobody got it right, is because they just weren't familiar with the technique. That's why I felt it was appropriate to talk about the Silverman book, because it does have different types of problems, and it'll expose you to different math that might help you solve a problem like this. All right, so let's go ahead and go through its solution. Let's start by drawing a picture of what's going on so that we can actually understand the problem. So this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So this is x, y, and we know that f of x equals x squared. That's a parabola, so it looks like this. Maybe, pretty rough sketch. And we want the tangent lines to the graph of this function that pass through the point one comma negative one. So maybe that's here. And again, this is really, really rough. I'm just doing a rough sketch here. So our tangent lines have to pass through this point. So maybe there's one of our tangent lines, and then maybe here's the other tangent line. And again, this is a really rough sketch. 
these points are not even accurate at all. So basically we have to find two different tangent lines to the graph of this function that pass through the point one, negative one. All right, so to find the equation of a tangent line, you need two things. You need the point and you need the slope. So we don't even know the point because the tangent lines, they just pass through this point, right? We don't know this point and we also don't know this point. So let's start with what we do know. We do know the slope of the tangent lines. We know the slope is the derivative. So the derivative of this function is just gonna be two x. But then we're kind of stuck. So what else do we do? All we have is this. So the trick is to somehow use this information in the problem to help us find the slope or to find the points. So what we'll do is we're gonna give this a name. I'm gonna call it x, y. And recall that slope is also equal to rise over run. So m is equal to, well, you subtract this from this. So y minus negative one, right? You subtract the y's and then you subtract the x's, x minus one. But this is a problem because we have y's and x's, but we know what y is, right? This is the same as y. So y is actually equal to x squared. So we'll come over here and fill it in. And now here's the really cool part. This is the slope and this is the slope, therefore they're equal. So we have two x equal to x squared plus one over x minus one. Let's go ahead and try to solve this for x. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by x minus one. Boom, so we get, I'm gonna distribute two x times x is two x squared. Two x times minus one is minus two x. Then here we have x squared plus one. Let's set it equal to zero and try to solve. Subtract x squared and subtract one. We will get x squared, right? Minus x squared minus x squared gives us x squared minus two x. Subtract one and you get that. You might think this factors easily, but it doesn't because this is a minus one. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add the one to the other side and we're gonna complete the square. So you have x squared minus two x equals one. To complete the square, you take the coefficient of x you divide it by two and square it. So it's negative two over two squared. So it's negative one squared, so that's one. Then you add that to both sides. So over here, we'll get this, going pretty quickly. And then you add it to this side, so you get this. Now we've completed the square. This is a perfect square trinomial, it factors. You keep the sign, divide by two always. Boom, take the square root of both sides. Because you have a variable squared and you're taking the square root, you have to put a plus or minus. I'm going a little bit quick because it's still more, right? So we're almost there though. And then you add one to both sides and these are our X values. Then the key step that everyone pretty much didn't do was this one. So now we have these X values, we need the Y values. Recall our original function was F of X equals X squared. So basically we have to take it, these X's and plug them in here. So F of X, is x squared, I'll write it again so you see it. So f of one plus or minus square root of two is one plus or minus square root of two squared. You can multiply this out using a formula. You square the first one, you multiply these and double them. And if it's plus, you put plus, if it's minus, you put minus. So it's just plus or minus. And you square the last one so you get two. Again, you can foil and break it up into cases. This is just a little bit quicker. It's basically the formula that you're used to seeing, but with a plus or minus. So it's a squared plus or minus two a b plus b squared. I hope you can see that, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe you can, let me just zoom in. There it is. All right, zooming back out. Good stuff. Two plus one is three. So this is three plus or minus two squared of two. Okay, so now we've got the y value. Mid problem sharpen, absolutely necessary. I love the way these pencils smell too, by the way. Mm. Yeah, these are nice, these are Ticonderoga pencils. Yeah, very nice, good quality stuff. So here we have our Y value and we have our X values. So we have two tangent lines now. Oh, we also need our slope. So our function, its derivative is two X. So we have to plug in the X values into this to get the slope. So let's finish up now, let's finish up both answers. So for our first ordered pair, it'll be one plus square root of two and then three plus two squared of two. That's gonna be our first ordered pair. And we're basically going to use the formula y minus y1 
is equal to m times x minus x1. And then, so for y1, we're going to use this. So y minus 3 plus 2 squared of 2 equals, for m, we're going to take our x value and plug it in here, because that's our slope, right? So 2 times this. And then x minus our x value, which is here. So, so that would be one of the answers, right? And obviously, you could distribute the negative 1 here and go from there, but that's one of the tangent lines. The other tangent line is going to be at the other point, 1 minus square root of 2, 3 minus 2 square root of 2, right? There's your x, there's your y. Same formula, y minus, and it's y1, so y1, and then mx minus x1. So this is y minus, so y1 is here, so parentheses 3 minus 2 root 2 equals m, and again, for m, you just plug in the x into the slope. So it'll be two parentheses, um, one minus root two, and then x minus parentheses one minus root two. And those should be the tangent lines to the graph of the function f of x equals x squared that pass through the point one comma negative one. So just a basic calculus problem, right? Really in theory, all you need to, to do this problem is just like basic calc one skills. But still, right, the problem destroys people because, you know, people just aren't exposed to it. And I think there's a lesson in that. So if you're ever stuck on a math problem and like you can't figure it out and you don't know what's going on and then you see the answer and you're like, oh, I should have known to do that because that's how people feel about this problem. Just remind yourself that once you're exposed to it, and once you see that technique, you'll be able to do it again and you'll be able to get a lot better at math. Yeah, really cool. So that's it. Hopefully you've learned something from this video. And I think this is a great book for anyone who wants to pick up an inexpensive calculus book that smells wonderful. Ah, oh, so nice. And it's really good quality and it's a Dover book. Super happy with this book. And also my friend told me that I should start telling people or asking people if they can subscribe in my videos, so I never do that. So if you're watching this video, please subscribe. Until next time, good luck and take care.